All right, here we go. Welcome, my companions, to A Course in Miracles. I'm Earl Purdy, and I'm here to share some ideas with you. And these ideas, you may agree with, you may not agree with. So can we can go ahead and just get that out the way, okay? All right, it's not about convincing. It's not about converting. I'm not here to debate, and I'm not here to defend. What I'm going to do is share what The Course in Miracles is sharing, and then you use it how best you can use it if you want to use it at all. Is that, is that fair enough? Yeah, yeah, okay, cool. Because then I can focus in on the, on the material for, especially for those who want to hear it and are open to hearing it and want to use it, you know. Because I've done it for 43 years, and the difference that it's made in my life is insurmountable, as well as the many, many people that I've had the blessing to be able to be a channel for this material, too. So I'm not, I'm not speaking from a theoretical perspective. I'm speaking from a perspective of someone who has experienced a lot of what I'm hearing. And so I know that there's not just one path to God, there's not just one path to truth, even though there's just one truth. You know, gravity is the same for all of us. I don't care what our religious beliefs are. Mm -hmm. So the way we individually think doesn't have any effect on what's a true universal law and that applies to everybody. I pretty much don't, no matter what you think, what you believe, what you feel right now, if somebody, somebody took all the oxygen out of the room, our bodies will fall over on the floor, right? Because that's a universal principle at this plane. So what we're interested in is what are, the, what are the principles, what are the laws, what are the rules that we can apply in any situation that always works regardless of our race, creed, color, ethnic, group, gender, intelligence, uh, no matter what the outer. What can I always count on, right? So what the Course in Miracles is teaching us that we are love, love is in us, that's all we really are, we got some blocks to it. We got some blocks, and then people go, well, well, what are those blocks? Well, those blocks are everything that you've learned and experienced since you've been born. It's your programming, it's your patterns, it's whatever you've been taught that you've accepted is true, to the point that now it's the habit, it's a habit. It's the way you live, that's your pattern. And the culture said that's your ego. And, and its definition of ego is basically the concept of ourselves that we make up. It's, it's to me, I think I am, that I've convinced myself I am. And that's, and I'll say to you, that's Earl. But really, I'm just telling you my concept of who I think I am and what I've been taught I am. It's really deep. It's really deep. So there's a song that I like to start. And today we're going to uh, focus in on um, to the, the subject of peace. So to have peace, teach peace, to learn it, uh, we're going to be on um, page, I think it's page 108, where I'm at, is page 108, paragraph 7. 108, paragraph 7 in the text, in the Course in Miracles, okay? And let me get this up on my, uh, let me get this up on my, so I can follow along and make sure that Make sure that I can see your comments as well as see whether or not I'm having any technical difficulties and I don't know about it. It's called monitoring. And actually, that's what we're supposed to do with our thoughts. We're supposed to monitor them, right? Because our thoughts, uh, do you know that the Course says the thoughts that you think you think, that the thoughts that you think you think are images you're making up? Right, like right now, do you know that everybody in the room is making up an image of me? Every, everybody in the room is now making up who they think I am or what they think about me or what they feel about me or no, that they don't think anything at all or comparing me to any time you were with someone who looked like me. You know what I mean? So, so, so as soon as we're looking at somebody, we're just looking at the images of the person that we made up. And what we want to get in touch with is the real being behind the image that I've made up. I, I want to get to know you past what I think of you and what I might have been taught about you or my, my past experiences of someone who looked like you. you know. So um, once you begin to understand that you're reacting to your own perceptions and your own meanings, you don't may not know it, but you've now discovered the way out of any kind of pain and suffering that you're going through which is awesome. So there's a song that um, comes from one of the Course in Miracles workbook lessons. That's one of my favorite songs that I like to do and I haven't heard it in a while. It's called, I am not a victim of the world I see. That's the name of it. 
I am not a victim of the world I see. So check this out. <laughs> uh, Of the world I see, I'm not a victim. Check out the words. Of the world oh, back away. I'm gonna have fun. I'm not a oh, all right. Y'all should be serious, but I'm not. Okay, just gonna relax and have a good time. All right, here we go. I'm not a victim of my mom. At all, I'm not a victim of the world I see. I'm not a victim of the world I see. Cause what's happening now is what I've done to me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm not a victim of the future, not a victim of the past, not a victim of anything that really doesn't last. I'm not a victim of a world I see says these are the only guidelines. You need not believe the ideas. You need not believe the ideas. You need not believe the ideas. You need not accept the ideas. You don't have to accept what I'm saying. You don't have to believe what I'm saying. You don't have to believe what I'm saying. You don't have to welcome what I'm saying. I'm not a victim of the North. I'm not a victim of the South. Not a victim of anything except what comes out my mouth. I'm just, you I'm not a victim. Not a victim of the world I see. Cause what's happening now is what I've done to me. Oh yeah, uh-huh. Of the world I see, I'm not a victim. I'm not a victim of the world I see. I'm not a victim no, of the world I see. No, no. Some of the ideas you may actively resist. Some of the ideas you may actively resist. Some of the things I say, a part of you might say, hell no. Uh-uh. I don't believe that. That's opposite to what I believe. What are you talking about? Don't say I didn't warn you. I'm saying that some of the things that I say, you may find hard to believe. Dum, 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 dum. I'm not a victim, I'm not a victim of the world I see. I'm not a victim, I'm not a victim of the world I see. Cause what's happening now is what I done to me. I'm not a victim of the world I see. I'm not a victim of the world I see. Or would it be like, I'm not a victim of the world I see. Right? Yeah, it could be. I'm not a victim of the I'm not a victim of the world I see. If you're here for the first time, I'm a completist. These are the guidelines for the class and the guidelines for the course in miracles, which is uh, you don't have to believe the ideas. You don't have to accept the ideas. Those of you online, welcome to Facebook Live. All my great friends around the world, thank you for tuning in with me. I appreciate that. Of course, the course is the only thing that you need to do to prepare yourself is to remind yourself you don't know everything. I thought that, I thought that was kind of funny. <laughs> Like one of the main ways I can open you up to the idea of learning anything is realize you don't know everything, right? And so if, if you want to be able to hear this, 
You, you have to realize you don't have to believe the ideas. You don't have to accept the ideas. You don't even have to welcome the ideas. Some of the ideas, you might resist some of the ideas. Uh, some of the ideas may startle you. They may, depending on your past and your background, some of the stuff I say may startle you. But do you know that often people forget when they say they want to hear something new and they want to get out of a situation that they're in or make a change, they don't realize that new means different. If you're going to hear something new, it needs to be different from what you already believed to be truly new. Then you get shocked when you actually hear something different, right? And then, then there's a part that wants to uh, defend the very thing that, you know, it's like we're saying we really want to let go of. So I want to tell you that I'm happy to be here. And the court says it's not, you're not being asked to judge and analyze the ideas at all. If you want to know if these ideas work, if you use them, then the ideas will show you that they work. So it has the audacity to say you could be evaluating and judging, or you could use it and see that it works. So those are the guidelines. That's it. That's it. Uh, this, this, this stuff also has a, a tendency to uh, knock people out cold. So you, you might be in for the best sleep you've had in three weeks. <laughs> okay. Just want to let you know. Okay. I'm telling you now. You can think I'm talking English, and it may be time that you go, what in the heck did he just get through saying? And the Course in Miracles is a spiritual teaching. So if you got real issues around the idea of any kind of source, a high power, a God, you just use the word love. Just use the word love. Because the Course teaches that there aren't the two emotions that we're experiencing. Do you know what they are? It's, it's that we're either experiencing, we're either experiencing love in the moment or we're experiencing fear, which the Course defines as a call for love. So the only two feelings anybody really have, whether they know it or not, according to the course, is either you feeling love right now or you feeling a call for it. You know, and the world is a great big call for love. It's a great big request. So that paragraph, what I said, 108 and paragraph 7, um, it starts out by saying, do you know that you are not being asked to make insane decisions? Nobody's asking you to make crazy decisions. Um, although you can think you are being asked to make insane decisions, uh, but, but you're not being asked to make insane decisions, even though you can think you're being asked to make insane decisions. And so what is an insane, I love the humor of the course, what is an insane decision? Well, the course says it must, however, be insane, okay, to believe that it's up to you to decide what God's creations are. It's insane for you to believe that it's up to you to decide what everybody else is. It's insane to believe that it's up to you to decide what everybody else is. It's insane for you to believe it's up to you to decide what I am. And I am as you decide I am. That's what the book is saying. It must have it be insane to believe that it's up to you to decide what God's creations are. I love you. So I just want to give you a little tip. Okay? Uh, it's insane if you think everybody's what you think they are. That's insane. Then it goes on to say, what, what page the page 108, 108. In, the, in the 108, uh -huh, paragraph 7. And I'm dividing, I always divide the hour up now between the theories of the text, and then there's a workbook lesson and exercise to make it real in your everyday life that I, that I also do. Because The Course in Miracles is one book, but it has three parts. It has a text that gives you the whole theoretical foundation and framework of the book. Then it has a workbook in it that you do one lesson every day of the year that gives you the practical application of the idea so that, it, so that it's just not something that you're reading and studying, but you can't integrate it into your life. So, so that's the workbook. And then at the end, there's a, what, there's a manual for teachers. So right now, uh, I'm doing the Foundation for Inner Peace version. We're on page 108. And it says, the Holy Spirit, which is the loving, conscious, aware, truth part of you, your divine self, the Course says, your real self perceives the conflict exactly as it is. Your, your love sees the conflict exactly as it is. So love's lesson, which the Course in Miracles would say the Holy Spirit's lesson, but he's saying the love's lesson, the lesson that you would learn from love, is going to teach you something that's very important. And they say, well, he said, well, what is that? 
To have peace, this is the secret. So what is the secret to having peace? Teach peace to learn it. What? If you want to have peace, you need you got to demonstrate it to see it and learn it. See, the course just gives very simple, very simple answers to the point that sometimes it throws, the simplicity of it throws people because they're looking for complex answers. Complex answers are smoke screens that hide the simplicity of truth. When you're not ready to do something about something, you make it so complex that it can't be solved. So complexity really is of ego. It's coming from fear. Simplicity is coming from love. If we would all just love each other in this world right now, all the problems that we think we have would be solved. If you could be safe in my presence and I could be safe in your presence and I want you to have happiness and peace and love and food and shelter and I don't want to hurt you. And I'm, you don't have to worry about me being in an alley waiting for you to pass by. That ain't happening with me. Okay, so I want to be in a world like me. I want to be in a world of friendly, loving, safe, conscious, you know, open to the higher power beings. But I know that the only way I can possibly be in an experience like that, it's only one way. You know what it is? I have to be it. I have to be it to have it. That's what this book taught me. Anything you want to have, be it. You want to have peace, be peaceful. You want to have joy, be joyful. You know, you want to have companionship, be, it. be somebody that reaches out and connects. It says we make it complicated. If you want to have peace, and do you know what the Course in Miracles describes peace as being? Total fulfillment. I love that definition. Total fulfillment. Complete fulfillment is peace. And so to teach complete fulfillment, teach peace to learn it. So if there's a situation in your life right now that you're having challenges in and it has anything to do with relationships and you want to have more peace in that relationship, what do you need to do? You need to demonstrate it right now yourself to learn it. You know, if you all are attacking each other, arguing with each other, one of y'all need to shut up. One of y'all need to shut up. One of y'all need to go, I'm not speaking anymore. Because I'm going to demonstrate what I want. And I want peace. And I don't want to be attacked. That doesn't mean I'm going to let you abuse me in any way. But I've got to demonstrate what I want to experience. Because that's the only way I'm going to have it. And, and, and do you know the court says that's still a preliminary step. What? What's the preliminary step? Well, it's me demonstrating peace if I want to have peace. And then, because I don't understand that having peace and being peaceful are the same thing. People who are full of conflict, anger, fear, and guilt are, are wondering why they don't feel peaceful. Well, it's because you, you're focused on conflict and upset and weary and guilt. Because you, So until I, until I become it, I won't have it on a regular basis. If I look for you to have to be a certain way for me to have peace, then I've made sure I have miserable failure the rest of my life about having any kind of consistent peace. So I've learned the secret is whatever I want to have in my life, Earl Purdy has to become himself. And, I put, and, I, and every time I can pull that off, I always attract people to me who are the same way. Every time. Every time. So, so I know that the second step, what is the first step? Well, the Course says the first step is to have all, give all to all. He says, if you really want to learn lessons of love, if you want to have all, what do you do? You give all to all. Now, when people hear that, they often think it's talking about your possessions. So they don't want to do it. <laughs> all right? Because <laughs> they immediately think you, you, you're asking for their physical material possessions. So they said to, to have all, give all, ooh. Right? And the Course says, no, when I say give all, I'm talking about, that's why I tell people to read it and stop projecting their interpretations on it. Because it explains what it says. It says, no, what I mean by that is to give everyone full appreciation. To have, to have full appreciation, give full appreciation. Because that's what's all. Love is all. And love is full appreciation. When I tell somebody I love them, I used to say, I love you and appreciate you. Because I want them to get clear that when I say I love you, I'm not saying it in meaning what they probably learn from the world. So that means my saying I love you is not to put, put a big limitation or responsibility on you in any kind of way. Because that's why people tend to get afraid when you say you love them because they're thinking of, in some cases, what's happened to them that was painful to people who said they love them. So when you say, you say you love me 
and all I've, I, I've experienced is pain through people who said they love me, I'm not going to jump into your arms when you say you love me. Because, because I'm afraid of my perception of love. That's what I'm really afraid of. I'm afraid of what I think love is. So the course is, what you want to do is give full appreciation. So when I tell somebody I love them, I tell them I love you and appreciate you because I want you to know that that's what I mean when I say I love you. It's not that I'm making any demands or asking you to make any sacrifices for me, which is what most people think love is, according to this, which we don't have to agree with. All right. Then he goes, well, then what do you want to take? He says, well, the second step, which is to have peace, teach peace. I love this. He says, uh, let me go back a little bit, because it, it's just so logical. He says, you don't, you don't know that having peace and being peaceful is still the same thing. But, but this is more advanced than to believe that to have all, you have to give all. So believing that you need to become what you want to have, that's the beginning of the reversal of your thinking. You want to think a new way? This is what you do. You, you first get that you need to start demonstrating what it is you want to have. So when you do the second step, which is to tell yourself to have peace, teach peace, to learn it, well, that's a, that's a positive affirmation for what you want. When, you, when a person says, I want to have peace, that's a positive affirmation for what they want. So when you say to have peace, teach peace, to learn it, that's you making a statement that you want peace. See, saying that you don't want conflict is not the same thing as saying you want peace. Saying you don't want to be broke is not the same thing as saying you want material wealth. People have a tendency to quickly say what they do not want, but they don't know that that is not you asking for what you want. You know, I don't want to go to that restaurant, right? Well, then what restaurant do you want to go? I don't know. <laughs> that's usually the answer you get from people. When you go, well, what do you want? The average person goes, I don't know. Right, but well, that's why anything seems to happen to you at any time, because you have no idea what should happen. So when something happens, you look back on it and go, is this something for me to be PO'd about? Does this call for vengeance, or is this okay? See, that's, and, that's, and of course, that's all people do all day long. They don't have, most of them don't have goals for what they want to happen during the day, so they look like stuff is just happening to them all day, because they never had an idea of what should be happening. That's the average person, right? Then, then of course, it well, since they have no idea of what should have happened in the first place, when something does happen to them, what do they do? He says, well, what the average person does when something happens to them unexpectedly is they try to decide whether or not if what just happened was acceptable, was it okay, <laughs> or do I need to get upset about that? And so that's why you see people peaceful, angry, peaceful, angry all day because they're doing that all day. Is this something that is acceptable and okay? Or is this something I need to get upset about? Is this okay or do I need to get upset? Is this okay or do I need to get upset? Is this okay or do I need to get upset? The Course in Miracles says that's all people doing all day long. Do I need to be okay about this or do I need to get upset about this? Do I need to be okay? Because they don't have any idea of what they want to happen, so stuff just happens to them all the time. And so they just feel like the victim of everything and they be just trying to deal with it in terms of is this okay or do I need to get upset? And it calls for some vengeance and some punishment on something. Somebody. That's total, that's total reason and logic and sense. So what does it say next? Well then you want to take a step out of the direction of conflict. So you ask yourself, well, how do I take a step out of conflict? Well, you move in the direction of wanting peace. So if I'm in conflict with a person, I should not be trying to defend my position so much as asking myself, what can I do to move? us in the direction of peace in this moment while we're having this disagreement with each other. Then the next thing the Court says, because the alternatives have been considered, I can either have peace right now or I can be in conflict and anger right now. And one choice has been crowned as the most desirable choice. And what is the most desirable choice? I want peace. Okay. Uh, nevertheless, more desirable still implies that even desirable has degrees. But even though moving in the direction of peace is essential for you to make that ultimate decision for peace, your wanting to get peace is not the final decision. Okay? Your, 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 your wanting peace is not the final, your choosing peace is not the final decision because you have not accepted one thing if you really want to have your problem solved. He says, there's one thing, the Course says, there's one thing you haven't accepted, that there is no difficulty in miracles, that a miracle has no difficulties. There is no, there's not one miracle that's bigger than another miracle, uh, that 
that whatever the creator can do that can be done with everything and anything. Um, there is no order of difficulties in love. If it's, really, if it's love, it's love, it's love, it's love, it's love. The Course is trying to say, we haven't accepted that, it, oh, I love this too. He says, y'all haven't accepted that it's easier, it's, it's just as easy to think lovingly as it is to think fearfully. I said, what? He said, you all have not accepted that just like you're thinking that thought that's upsetting you and making you mad, you could just as easily be thinking the thought that's making you feel better and giving you more peace. You think thinking a positive, loving thought is harder than thinking a thought that's fearful, angry, depressed, and guilty. That's what he just said to us. You haven't accepted. Because he says if we see things correctly, it's a miracle. <laughs> so, so he says that's why it's called the Course in Miracles. I thought that was funny. You miss, you'll see the human one day. Okay. Yeah. It's, it's like it's a miracle if you all treat each other right. It's a miracle if you all communicate in love and peace. It's a miracle that if all of you all take care of each other like you should. So he calls it a miracle. It's a, cor it's a correct perception. It's a loving perception. Because do you know that most people are busy judging whether or not anybody deserves their dysfunctional love? <laughs> I love to say that often, every now and then. You know what I'm saying? We work, we make people work so hard for our dysfunctional love. You know, so the truth is, I'm going to show you, according to the course, why you find some things difficult and why you find some things hard. Would you like to know? Okay. With that thunderous response? Okay. Um, nothing is difficult that you totally desire. Things are only as difficult as how much you don't really desire it. Things are only as hard as how much you're doing something you don't really desire to do. So look at your life right now, and whatever you see difficulty, that is where you don't wholly desire what you're doing. And, it, and, that, and I, I had so many yes buts behind that. Yes but, but yes but. No, 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 I'll say it again. Nothing is difficult that is wholly desired. If you really totally completely desire it, it is not difficult. Because when you desire something totally, you create it. That's the way the law works. You will create what you totally desire. You are creators. You're more than little human beings out here trying to pay their taxes. Okay? That you're more than that. You're more than a woman, man, or whatever pronoun, gender, description that you have of yourself at any level. In any kind of way, you're more than that. That's what I'm telling you. You're more than that. You're more than that. And so, of course, you are a creator. You were created by a creator, and you are a creator. I mean, which, which child doesn't have the, the characteristics of his parents? <laughs> right? You know, so you are a creator. You came from love. You are love. You came from a creator. You are a creator. Then, of course, says, well, you want to know how you create? Well, you create by totally desiring what you want. If you, if you have any doubts and conflicts and fears, you don't totally desire it because the truth is you can never totally desire what you're afraid of. Because if you're afraid of something, you don't really want it to happen. You know, if I'm afraid of a line, I don't want the line to happen. So whatever I'm afraid of is what I don't want to happen. You're afraid of relationships, you don't want one. You're afraid of money, you don't want one. Afraid of God, you don't want God. Afraid of love, you know, and, and, and again, the Course of Miracles just presents... What I love about it, it just presents in very simple terms another way to look at it. And it says you can, it's okay if you don't believe it. That's all right. So that allows me to hear more of it. Okay? Because it's kind of fascinating whether I agree with it or not. It's so simple. Uh, you need to accept that uh, there's no other difficulties in thinking a loving thought or a uh, fearful negative thought. You could think either one of them just as easily. Um, if you're having a lot of difficulties, you, you're trying to do something that you don't totally desire to do. If you, all that difficulty you're having in that relationship, there's a part of you that doesn't desire to be in that relationship. That all those difficulties you're having on your job, that's because there's a part of you that does not desire to be on that job. All that difficulty that you're having is because you don't totally desire to be there and to have it wherever you're having the most difficulty. So if you're trying to give up something and let go of something, whatever your particular addiction is to anything, you know, 
uh, you get into that point that you don't hold it, desire it, so it's become it's going to become difficult for you to use it anymore. So that's that's so that's so that that's so powerful, you know. Um, because what I don't want to happen is something I'm going to see is difficult. And if I see hurting myself the way I used to as being difficult, then I won't create it. So that's so that's that's deep. That's deep. Now, while that's percolating, we're going to do lesson 34 in the workbook. Those of you who have the workbook, it's in the Course in Miracles, it's uh, page 51, lesson 34. Lesson 34, lesson 34, lesson 34. I can see peace instead of this. I can see peace. This is, this is so good. Uh, I'm just so good. I want to get it up where I can really see it. So give me, a, give me a second here. This is a low tech operation, okay? Because I have this nasty habit of, of wanting to make things simple for me. Have you ever wanted that? <laughs> Did any of what I just said make any sense to, to anybody? Yes. Yes. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And did you notice uh, how simple it was? And have you noticed that there's a part of your mind that's forgotten it? Yeah. That if I said to you right now, close your eyes and say in detail what I just said, you might find it would be very difficult for you to do that in detail. Because what I just said is the opposite from the way we're normally taught to think. And so anything you hear that's opposite to your normal way of thinking it takes a little while for it to get through to you. Because it's easier for us to agree with what we already know, with what we already believe, right? So that's why repetition, that's why repetition is the key to learning, even though people think it's analyzation. But it's really repetition that allows you to accept any kind of new idea. If you repeat anything long enough, people will believe it. If you repeat anything to yourself long enough, you're going to believe it. So it's not about you understanding that you are wealthy. It's so much it is about repeating yourself that you are. Repeat it to yourself until you accept that you have wealth. See, it's just too simple. But, but think about it. Don't most people repeat all the stuff over and over again that they don't like and then experience it? Think about the things in your life that you don't like and how many times you repeated that to yourself. You know, uh, I, I can't trust me and 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 I can't trust me. I can't trust me. You're a man. I can't trust you. And that's where, that's where the logic goes. Because I convinced myself that I couldn't. You know why I convinced myself I couldn't trust me? Because of the experience that I had with somebody else that's not even you. Well, yes, I'm judging you by what... I know you're frank, but I'm judging you by what Peter did. So I'm going to trust, distrust you and punish you because Peter wasn't trustworthy. And he cheated on me. So I'm just going to automatically reject that you might do the same thing because I'm not going to let that happen to me anymore. And so you end up recreating it for yourself because what? Whatever you do very easily, you create. So if I can go into distrust very easily, then I can very easily be a distrustful person because whatever you do very easily and repeat to yourself, you're going to create. Woo! Woo! You mean I'm creating all those untrustworthy women in my life? Yeah, by judging them based on what you experienced in the past and... You won't, let, you won't let who they really are come forth because you're too busy focusing on everything that reminds you of the first, last one. So you won't let nobody new show up. So this lesson is called, I Could See Peace, instead of this. So, so when you're reading the paper, you listen to the news, what is it you're supposed to say? I can see peace instead of this. <laughs> Yeah, I hear what y'all saying about Ukraine, but I can see peace instead of this. I, I know what y'all saying about all the racial stuff and going on. I can see peace instead of this. I, I know all the stuff that's going on with the climate change and the weather and, but, and my car. <laughs> but I can see peace. He said, say I could see something else. Tell yourself I could see something else. I know I look like my, I'm seeing my bills not getting paid. Yeah, but you could see something else. You could see your bills being paid. So you could see something other than what you're seeing. Or you could say, I could see love instead of this fear. I could see love right now instead of this fear. You know, or, or, or you could say, 
Uh, I could see peace right now instead of anger. Instead of anger, I, re I could see peace. I don't just have to see anger. I don't just have to be mad right now. And then, of course, the miracles are saying, you all need to say that. You know, because the problem with that is when a person hears it, it'll sound logical to them. Okay, yeah, of course I can say I can see peace and stuff like this. But what they don't do is say that when they're mad. Mm -hmm. And that's why you don't get the result. Because don't tell that you're not using it. <laughs> you mean I'm not going to get the results of the cake I never put in the oven? No. Mm -hmm. I don't know how to break that to you, buddy. I can't. You're not going to get the results of a recipe you didn't do. Okay, so I'm sorry. You are not going to create more peace in your life by constantly being the hell raised and attacking everybody and projecting them and blaming them and for everything that you're going through. You, did, you need to forgive. You need to learn how to let go of that stuff because it's killing you, but it's not having any effect on the people you hate. The people you hate, I, I just saw them last week over in Hawaii. <laughs> I'll say that again. The person that you hate, that you're not letting yourself have any peace about because you've so, got so many grievances toward them, they don't feel them. They do not feel them. They do not feel your anger. They do not feel your sadness. They do, they do not feel it. They don't feel it. You are feeling it. You are feeling your anger. You are feeling your grievance. You are feeling your depression. You are feeling your boredom. Nobody that you're feeling that way about, nobody who you're blaming for that, is feeling any of that. So all you're doing through your grievances and your unforgivenesses is attacking yourself. Uh-oh, it's time for some music. <laughs> Kumbaya. So what am I doing right now? I'm telling you the, the conditions that you will find prevailing when you look at things another way. I'm telling you what kind of situation you'll be in when you're willing to see things another way. I'm telling you that you could see abundance in your life instead of the lack that you might be looking at right now. You could see abundance in your life where you think you're seeing lack right now. You could see relationship and partnership in your life where you think you see loneliness and alone this right now because your peace of mind is what your peace of mind is an internal matter your peace of mind is something that has to be created from inside you your peace of mind what does that mean when i say that your peace of mind must come from inside yourself this is what i mean what i mean is your peace of mind begins with your own thinking where did you, where does your peace of mind begin with your thinking where does the peace and abundance you want, the healing, the health you want, it, it begins with your thinking, and then what happens? You think it, and then it extends outward. You think peace, and peace extends outward. You think healing, healthy thoughts, and they extend outward. You think, you think of thoughts of love, and then they extend outward. I'm telling you that peace of mind and having peace and happiness is an inside job, and it begins with your own thinking, and then it extends out. So everything everybody's experiencing only thing that everybody's experiencing, whether they know it or not, is their own thoughts. It's my thoughts that make my sadness and my fear and upset, and it's my thoughts that make me feel good. Everything I feel is coming from my thoughts. The way that I feel when I'm around you is not coming from you. You don't ever feel somebody else in that sense. What you're feeling is the feelings you have about them. That's what, that's what we always feel. I, I felt your love. No, you felt your love for that person, and then you said you felt their love. Because how many people have you told you love, and they say, well, I don't love you. <laughs> so obviously the love you were feeling wasn't coming from them. <laughs> but, you know, when you're ready to deceive yourself, you make it up, make up that it did even though it didn't, because they told you it didn't. So that's the proof. You always, do you know you're always feeling your fear? You're not feeling anybody else's fear. You're feeling your fear. You're feeling your anger. I like when people say, I felt your anger. No, you felt your anger. And you projected it on me. 
You're always feeling your feelings. All your feelings come from you. All your feelings come from you. They don't come from anywhere else. They don't come from anybody else. All your feelings come from you. All your feelings come from you. All of your feelings come from you. Do you mean all of my feelings come from you? All of your feelings come from you. All of your feelings come from you. Everything you're feeling is coming from you. Everything you're feeling is coming from you. Everything you're feeling is coming from you. Everything you're feeling right now is coming from you. You are the one that's causing everything that you're feeling right now, and none of the people in the situations and circumstances that you're in is causing it. Because you, because you are the one that's determining how you are seeing it. You're the one that's determining how you're seeing your financial situation right now. You're the one that's determining how you see your relationships right now. You're the one determining how you see your career right now. You're the one that's determining how you see your life right now. You're the one that's doing that, and your feelings come from that. And that's where feelings come from. All feelings come from the people who are having them. <laughs> Whoa! I used to believe the one thing I had no control over was my feelings. I can remember so clearly when I used to tell people, you heard my feelings. And I was absolutely convinced that they hurt my feelings until I learned the truth. The truth was I was hurting my feelings. I was hurting my feelings by what I was telling myself about what you said. You could call me the N-word right now. How I would react to that would depend on how, what meaning I give to you saying that. I'm in control of my feelings, not you. You want to be in control of your feelings? Just realize you're the one that gives everything the meaning it has. And you'll, be, you'll finally get over your moodiness and what you think of as you having out of control emotions when you realize that mo emotions are nothing but thoughts that you've given emotionally charged meaning to. It's a thought you're giving the power to and then that causes your feeling. So that means if you want to have peace, it's going to come from having a peaceful perception of everything. But it's from your peace of mind that you have a peaceful perception of things. It's from my loving mind that I have a loving perception of things. But you don't know what my daddy did to me when I was a baby. So because of that, I cannot decide for peace today. <laughs> what? Well, you, well, would you like to see something other than the grievance that you're seeing towards your father? Because... I only, if you want to have peace, well, you're going to have to have another way of seeing because your dad's dead and so is his body. And so, therefore, you can't really heal with him on the external plane. So, if you're going to have any peace, there's going to be a change inside of you on the inside. And do you know that that change inside of you is going to begin with your own thinking? And then when you have a new thinking, it's going to extend outward into your physical perception of the world. I said again, when you have those new loving thoughts, they're going to extend outward. And from your peace of mind, that's where you're seeing the world in a peaceful way it's going to come from. You're seeing the world in a fun way, a happy way it's going to come from the peace and happiness in your mind. Then people go, well, how do I have peace and happiness in my mind? Well, it's an internal matter. You're going to have to begin with your own thoughts. But how am I going to see things differently? Begin with your own thoughts. What do you mean, begin with your own thoughts? Where did the word thoughts come from? Who made up thoughts? Is it a capital T on that or is it a little t? You know, the ego man goes into all of the analyzation of meaningless things other than go, Herdy just said to me, I could have peace instead of this hell I'm going through on my job. Um, that there's another way of looking at the job, I'm, I'm, and, it, and it, it could be controlled by me on the inside, which is the best way for it to happen, because trying to control everybody else is a fruitless project. And all I have to do is be willing to give myself some new thoughts, and then that's going to give me peace of mind. And when I have peace of mind, I have a peaceful perception of my job. When I have peace of mind, I have a peaceful perception of my job. So you need to undertake this uh, Whenever is most conducive for readiness. So how can you know if you're ready to do this? You will be having something other than peace. Mm -hmm. If you're going through anything other than peace in any area of your life right now, then you are ready. <laughs> Isn't that great? <laughs> if you're unhappy right now, you're ready. <laughs> okay? So then if you can, close your eyes. Because what you want to do is you want to look at the inside of your mind. You want to see what, so when you look within, 
just say it this way if you want to make look, you know, you, we hear look within all the time, and I look straight to my intestines. And so the Course in Miracles is saying look within means look inside your mind. Look inside your mind. That's your inner world. And you're going to say first to my, like I'm, I've been worrying about what's going to happen at work. Well, I can see peace instead of this worrying about what's going to happen at work. Why do I want to do that? Because you first want to apply these ideas to your inner world, to your inner thoughts. Because don't forget, whatever you think is what's going to extend outward. So if you want to change a movie, you have to change the movie in the projection booth. So you got to change the movie now. And so the way you change the movie is by changing your thinking, by telling yourself you could see peace instead of that worry that you're having right now. You could see the solution instead of the worry that you're having right now. Tell yourself, I can see peace instead of this, okay? And the Course in Miracles says, throw your mind up against the wall and spread its legs and search it. <laughs> search your mind. Do your, give your mind a pat down. Give your mind a pat down for the thoughts that's inside of it right now. You're having thoughts right now of some type. Search your mind for the thoughts that you're already having right now, okay? So what kind of thoughts do I want you to search for? Well, I want you to search for thoughts that frighten you. Well, I do that pretty much all day. Oh, okay. I want you to search your mind for thoughts that you feel like are anxiety-provoking. What? 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 <laughs> what you talking about, man? All day long, I think I'm looking at situations that provoke anxiety. Okay, what's the next thing is asking me to do? Search your mind for offending people. What? This is asking me to find people that offend me and upset. Okay, that's easy. Uh, search, your, search your mind for offending events. Well, you know I don't like that meeting that they had the other night over at the school. Okay, search your mind for offending events. In other words, search your mind for anything else that you are harboring fearful, angry, unloving thoughts. In other words, I'm asking you all to think the way you all always think. I want you to know casually all the thoughts that you have all day, the negative ones, the positive ones, the ones you like, the ones you don't. He, said, he says, I want you to casually, casually, I love the word casually. Uh, he says, I want you to casually look at your thoughts. And while you're looking at your thoughts, I want you to say, all right, I'm worried about my finances right now. I could see peace instead of this. Oh, I'm concerned about that, that follow-up that I'm with my lawyer. Uh, I could see peace instead of this. Oh, I'm concerned about what's happening internationally. I could see peace instead of this. I'm kind of concerned about will my plane flight be canceled? I could see peace instead of the weird. In other words, everything that comes up all day long that is something that's creating some kind of fear and anxiety, and you're thinking the thought, you know it's not hidden anymore because you're thinking it. So all you have to do is look at that thought and go, I can see peace instead of this. I'm focusing on what I think my kid is doing right now and it's really upsetting me. I can see peace instead of this. I'm looking at a world of fear and separation. I can see peace instead of this. That's what he says. Then let each thought go. Look at that visually. Let each thought go. Can't you see like I'm holding on to the thought, the thought trying to get away from me? I'm like, he said, let each thought go. When you're having grievances and anger, that's what you're doing. You like won't let the thought go. That thought of what happened to you in that last relationship is trying to get away from your butt, but you won't let that thought go. Okay? He said, but let it go. How do you let that, that thought or that fear go? By telling yourself, I can see something else beside this. I could experience something else except this worry and concern. I could, and then people go, well, that's obvious I want to do that. Say it. <laughs> he said, say it. See, that's the trick. Is you come up with a reason not to do the simple thing of just saying it when you're upset. So the Course in Miracles says, as you begin, <laughs> if you begin to experience difficulty in thinking of things to be upset about, <laughs> Look at the humor. Are you experience, I know you might begin to experience difficulty in thinking of specific subjects. So if you can't think of anything you're upset about because you are so in denial right now, well, continue to repeat the idea, I can see peace instead of this, to yourself in an unharried manner. That means I can see peace instead of this, but I'm not going to apply it to anything in particular. I can see peace instead of this but I'm not applying it to any specific thing. I could just see peace instead of this. He says, but just don't make any exclusions. 
you absolutely could see peace instead of what you are experiencing is giving you fear or conflict in any area of your life or anybody else in any area of their life because there's no other difficulty in what God can do. There is no order of difficulty. One thing is not harder than another thing for the creator of all that is. Certainly not your MasterCard. What did you say? <laughs> there is no order of difficulty for love. There, there is no, there's nothing's difficult for the creator to do. Nothing, anything is possible with God. So there are no exclusions. So say you can see peace instead of this. Whenever you feel your peace of mind is threatened, whenever you feel like your peace is threatened, then you say, I can see peace instead of this. I can see love instead of this. I can see happiness instead of this. I can see freedom instead of this. Whenever you're feeling threatened, go, I can see peace instead of this. That will protect you from temptation. What is the temptation that is protecting you from? The temptation to keep yourself in the same old upset state of mind that you're already in. You're going to be tempted to keep your pattern in place and keep that pain going. You're going to be tempted to still attack, still hold a grievance, still stay upset. He says that's the temptation. You're going to be tempted to keep yourself in pain. You're going to be tempted to keep yourself in that addiction or that fear or that lack. You're going to be, that's the temptation. When the court says, Lead us not into temptation. That's his definition of temptation. Don't, don't, let me not be tempted to hurt myself anymore. Let me not be tempted to look at things in a way that doesn't give me peace or anyone else. Let me not be tempted to cuss them out. That's a new kind of let me not have temptation. And if it comes up, just say, I can see peace in this situation instead of what I'm seeing in it right now. I can see peace with you in this situation instead of what I'm seeing right now. I could see peace with you in this situation instead of what I'm seeing with you. I, I, me, and, me and this person are having a disagreement, and I'm telling myself, I could see peace in this situation instead of the anger and upset that I'm seeing now. I could see peace in this situation instead of the conflict that you and I are having right now. I want to see peace in this situation that we're having conflict in right now. You'd be amazed at how people will respond, even if there's an upset, if you're serious to say, I want peace in this situation between us if it's any way possible. I want some peace between us right now. If it's any way possible, I want peace between us. He said, I can see peace in this situation instead of what I now see in it. And if the inroads on your peace of mind makes you even angrier, uh-oh, what do you mean? He says, he says it, it calls it inroads on your peace of mind. If it takes the form of more generalized emotions. In other words, if you, are you depressed right now about something? Are you feeling anxiety? about something? Are you worrying about something? You just Are you just worrying? Or did you just feel anxiety? Or did you just feel depression? Well, when that's happening, he says, well, what you want to say to yourself is, I can see peace instead of this depression. I can see peace instead of this anxiety. I can see peace instead of this worry. Notice he keeps saying, use the idea. And then he says, and if you find that you need more than one application, which is hilarious, if you, if you find you need more than one application of this all day long, then I want you to take a few minutes and I want you to devote these minutes to repeating the idea until you feel some sense of relief. So people ask me, well, Earl, how many times should I say this to myself? I can see peace instead of this. That's a great question. Um, how many times should I say what you're telling me? How many times should I... Say it, and the Course of Miracles says, well, you see it until you feel some sense of relief. But you tell yourself the truth until you feel better. If it takes 200 times before you feel better, take 200 times of saying, I can see peace instead of this, until you feel better. If you say, I can see peace instead of this five times, and you feel better, then you know you're moving in the right direction, and that might be enough. But if, and you do it how long? Till you feel better. You tell you, that's why I go over this over and over and over again, because I know the possibility of a person hearing this and walking out the room and remembering it the first time that they've heard it is very slight. 
But that doesn't mean they didn't hear it. It doesn't mean it's not in you, but it's unrealistic almost in a way to think that you're going to remember what you've heard in this class today in detail. But if you walk out of that, but if you walk out of here and you go, uh, you get you tempted to get upset when you go to dinner this evening and you go, wait a minute, I can see peace instead of I'm seeing instead of what I'm seeing with this server right now that's not getting my order right. If you did that one time, you don't have any idea how you would change your life and your whole life would shift. So, so the end of this would be what? This is the last paragraph. What do you say to yourself? And it's okay. It's okay. The course told, taught me a long time ago, Earl Purdy, if you're going to teach this material, I want you to understand that the reaction that most people who hear what you're saying is going to have is either they're going to forget it Go to sleep or die. <laughs> so don't take it personally when people don't remember what you said because it's so different from the way they've been programmed to think. Don't get upset when you when they go to sleep because I've already told you that's what's going to happen. And one day they're going to die. <laughs> so... <laughs> <laughs> That's what we forgot. We forgot, of course, that we've forgotten our eternal nature and we've forgotten who we really are. So the, how do you get out of it? He says, well, the first thing you do is tell yourself, I can replace, you tell yourself, I can replace my feelings of depression. I can replace my feelings of depression, anxiety, or worry. I can replace my feelings of depression, anxiety, or worry. I can replace my thoughts about this situation. I could replace my thoughts about this situation that's upsetting me. I, could, I can replace my thoughts about this situation that's upsetting me. Uh, I can replace my feelings of depression about this personality or this event with peace. I can replace the feelings that I'm having with peace. I can replace the upset that I'm having with peace. I can replace everything that I'm going through that's keeping me from feeling ecstatically grateful and happy right now with peace. I can replace whatever's going on in my life right now or anybody else's life right now. I can replace those feelings of depression, anxiety, and weary, or any thoughts about this situation or this person or this event. I can replace it with complete fulfillment. I can replace this anxiety with, you can replace your anxiety and depression with complete fulfillment. You can replace your anxiety and worry and depression with complete freedom and peace. You can replace everything that you're going through right now that's not giving you happiness and peace and joy with happiness, peace, and joy. And the way you get out of the depression and the worry and the upset is to simply say that to yourself every time you are thinking or feeling the negative thoughts that you think and feel a whole lot during the day, then all you have to do is realize whenever you think it's negative and you're afraid and you're worried about something during the day, you're doing part one of the workbook lesson. Because part one of the workbook lesson told you to search your mind for everything that upsets you. Well, if you're good at being upset all day, then you're great <laughs> at having thoughts and knowing the thoughts that upset you. So you're way ahead of the game if you're a grumpy person. You're an angry person. You're way ahead of the game. You already revealed all the thoughts you're supposed to apply the truth to. So you're way ahead of the game. See, the people who think that they're nice, they're buried there. So, so it's harder for them to be here because they're really just, they're just as crazy too. But they're pretending they're not. But y'all are just straight up with it. I hate my daddy. Okay, you did part one. I told you to look for the, the thoughts that are bothering you or upsetting you, right? And you just was honest enough to say how you honestly felt in that minute without trying to cover it up with some positive thoughts, you be honest. And so now you can apply the lesson directly by telling yourself, I can replace my feelings with peace. Just try that. So I have one little thing I'm going to say at the end. And I want to thank you all so much for coming today. I teach my classes on a donation basis, so I'm going to give you the opportunity to share if you like. You're totally innocent if you don't, because everything comes through you from God anyway. And I'm grateful to you. I'm Earl Purdy, full-time teacher of A Course in Miracles here. If those of you online, if you'd like to make a financial expression of appreciation, you can use several ways. You can use Venmo, Zelle, Cash App, PayPal, 
And all you need is my email address, and that's Earl Purdy at Earl Purdy dot com. Earl Purdy at Earl Purdy dot com. <clears throat> and you can also go to my website, www.earlpurdy.com. I'm available for one-on-one -on -one sessions called Clarity Sessions that are about allowing you to, there's nothing that you're going through that you could present to me that I could not give you the Course in Miracles answer or solution or the other way to look at it to get it released and to heal. So if there's things that you know you're ready to let go of, that you're ready to have replaced, that you're ready to do differently, then I'm available for one-on-one -on -one sessions. Because I love A Course in Miracles and I've been teaching it and learning it for over 40 years. And I wouldn't do anything that long that I didn't see the benefits out of. Just grant me that much intelligence, <laughs> you know. So, <laughs> it's funny when people try to convince me that the path that I'm on is the wrong path and I'm the one satisfied with it. <laughs> that is so crazy to me. You just, what you just defined is the path that wouldn't work for you. And that's, you, you need to pay attention to that. But just because it wouldn't work for you, don't tell me it wouldn't work for me because that means you don't have confidence in your path. Because if you have confidence in your path, you don't feel any need to defend it or try to get anybody to do it. And you know what you want to do? You want to work with the ones that's already open to you, who've been sent to you, then try to convert somebody over to you who's not interested in you. And that goes with relationships and everything else. It does. <laughs> But the, but the Course teaches that when you don't love yourself, you're going to always go after what you can't have. But when you don't love yourself, you go after what you cannot have and who you cannot have. You always go after who you cannot have when you don't really want them. <laughs> because certainly you wouldn't go after, you wouldn't not go after something you want to have that you can have. I know, take a minute. It's all right. It's okay. it's all... Oh, no, it's really, I know, that's what he tells him. He said, well, you know, the goal says, simplicity is very difficult for a twisted mind. <laughs> I laughed so hard when I heard that. That was so funny. I, Earl, you're having a hard time. It's because your mind twisted, son. Your mind is twisted. So, it's, so I'm giving you some. What is simplicity? I'm feeling unhappy, it could be replaced with happiness. Uh, I want peace. Start demonstrating it, and guess what? You're happy. This is really, really hard. Yes, yeah, because you don't really want it. So all you have to do is move it in the desire of what you, direction of what you desire totally. Well, I don't know what that is. Well, then that's, well, then you need to set a goal. Because as long as you have, don't have a goal, there's no way you can evaluate how you're doing. <laughs> right? So if you don't have a goal, you can't ever judge where you are. So if you have no goal, things are going to just seem to be happening to you. If you want, I'm telling you, you know who I'm talking to. You know exactly who I'm talking to. Am I talking to you? Yes. <laughs> yes. You, you're a person that's always, every day, there's something that's just happening to you. <laughs> the, it, the Course says it's because you don't have an idea what should be happening to you. I went, oh, okay. Then my man goes, what is that? And the court said, well, I'll answer that for you, too. Ask for peace. Ask for total fulfillment. Start there. So, this, so, this, so Spirit taught me, he said, well, if you're a teacher, you got to be willing to repeat, what you, repeat this over and 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 over again because you're teaching what you need to learn, Earl. So on Thursday at 7 p.m. Mountain Time on the Earl Purdy page on Facebook, I do Hardcore Course in Miracles. Hardcore Course in Miracles, Facebook Live, 7 p.m. Mountain Time, every Thursday. Sundays, 1 o'clock, another Facebook Live on the Course in Miracles. And you're welcome, if you're in the Denver area, to come around and come over and come by. It's at 1555 Race Street. 1555 Race Street in Denver, 80206. And I'm, all my stuff is on YouTube, too. All right, here we go.
throw your mind against the wall. Throw your mind against the wall. Spread the legs of your mind. Spread the legs of your mind. <laughs> I mean, not sue me. <laughs> Don't lose your sense of humor. Of course, and that's how we got here in hell in the first place. We forgot to laugh. I love it. To search your mind for everybody. To search your mind what's making you feel afraid, what's making you feel anxiety, what's offending you, what events that always offend you. Search your mind for any kind of unloving thoughts about anyone, including yourself, that you're having right now. I know what they did to you in your perception, and I'm not saying that you shouldn't feel what you feel. I'm not asking you to repress anything. I'm saying if you will bring up the things that you're worried about, that you feel sadness about, that you feel upset about, if you would just not hide those things, which you already don't do, you already don't hide those thoughts. So what do I want you to do with those thoughts? I want you to give those thoughts 24 hour surveillance. You need to casually check your thoughts out. Just like you're looking at somebody from across the room. Just casually check your thoughts out. <laughs> no, you act, don't even let your thoughts know you're there. <laughs> then what are you going to do, Earl? What is, what, then I want you to watch them. Watch what? I want you to watch your thoughts. I want you to watch your thoughts. But how do you, I watch my thoughts? Well, it's all of the thoughts that upset you that you are aware of. That is you watching your thoughts. Now you know the thoughts that you need to watch. So what do you do when you watch these thoughts? Where do these negative, fearful thoughts come from? Where they are coming from what? The negative, fearful thoughts are coming from your mind. Your, neg your negative, fearful, lack thoughts, your lonely thoughts, your upsetting thoughts, all those thoughts are coming from you. All your 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 thoughts are coming from you. Your loving thoughts and feelings are coming from you. Your thoughts of anger, they're coming from you. Your thoughts of freedom, they come from you. So tell yourself, in those areas that you are experiencing any kind of difficulty, you think that thought, and then you let that thought go, and then you let the, ne the, the next thought come to you. You think that thought about what's going on with your family, and then you let the thought about what you're going, what's going on with your family go after you say, I could see peace instead of this thought that I'm having about my family right now. And then when you say that, let that go, and then when the next thought of that upsets you or worries you comes up, you, sell, you tell yourself again, you feel it, because you were told to search for it. There it is. Don't feel upset about that because you're thinking a negative, fearful thought. You were told to search your mind for the negative, fearful thoughts, which was really a real easy thing for spirit to ask of us. Actually, I think this is why I love this teaching, because it's never asking me to do anything that I can't do. That's how you can tell you're not on your path. Your path, if, you're, if you're on your path, you're not being asked to do things you cannot do. When you're on your path, you're asked to do things that you can do and that you want to do. That's how you can tell when you're on your path. You're able to do it and you want to do it. It's not difficult. Your path is not difficult if you totally desire complete fulfillment. So mighty companions, you can see peace instead of this. I appreciate you so much from the bottom of my heart. Thanks for coming today. And don't forget, y'all, don't forget that watch and listen to it at least four times. And if you have any criticisms, keep them to yourself. Okay? Thank you very much. I love you. See you next time. <laughs>